Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 7 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we will learn all about cash ratios. In simple terms, cash ratio is the ratio which measures the ability of the company to repay short term debt with either cash or cash equivalent. So in this tutorial we basically have four objectives. Number one, understand what cash ratio is all about. Number two, what is its formula and the calculations. Number three, apply that formula and calculations on Colgate case study. And number four, what its interpretations altogether. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We will be working on the files which we have for this video, that is the Colgate case study. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, then please do so from the description link below. Also, to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. But what is cash ratio? Cash ratio is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the solvency ratio. In our previous videos, we discussed about current ratio and quick ratio and uh, each of these ratios have certain limitations associated with it and uh, measures the liquidity of the company. Cash ratio also measures the liquidity of the company, but uh, it, it's, it's a bit more aggressive if you look at it. What's the formula for current ratio? Current ratio is like current assets divided by current liabilities. However, when we talk about quick ratio, we say that uh, since inventory is, uh, is difficult to convert into cash pretty quickly, we should reduce, we should deduct inventory from the formula. So quick ratio is uh, current assets minus inventory divided by your current liabilities. However, when we look at the cash ratio, the formula is defined in a way that you need to take only the cash related uh, you know, components within the balance sheet and uh, of course you can include uh, marketable securities which can be readily converted into cash. So cash, cash equivalents, marketable securities, these are the things which go in the numerator and uh, cash ratio basically tries to measure the liquidity position by seeing that whether these, a combination of these uh, two items are enough to pay off its current liabilities. That's how cash ratio is all about. And let's look at the formula, cash ratio formula, cash plus cash equivalents. Uh, you can also make this as marketable securities. It's one and the same divided by your total current liabilities. It's a bit more aggressive in terms of, uh, you know, looking at uh, the liquidity of the company, but uh, some analysts do use it. Many don't. And I'll come to the reason as to why it is not used by many analysts too. I'll use the same example as we did in the previous video of quick ratio where we had the current assets as 1200, cash as 100, marketable securities 100, account receivables 200 and inventory is 800. So here we calculated the current ratio which was uh, current assets divided by current liabilities and uh, the quick ratio was uh, current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. So let's now calculate the cash ratio cash ratio will be equal to cash plus marketable securities or cash equivalents divided by your current liabilities so what do we get we get this as 0.2 so how do we interpret the cash ratio of 0.2 is it good is it bad or uh, we have to look at something else as well now uh, when we we were discussing about current ratio and quick ratio in our previous videos. We understood that greater than one was a good position to be in and less than one was a kind of a slightly concerning situation. But uh, cash ratio of 0.2, should we say that it's a bad situation to be in? I think there is uh, something more to be looked at. Here, what happens is when you have a cash ratio, which is, let's say, greater than one for a company which you are analyzing, now, what does that mean? From liquidity point of view, yes, liquidity point of view, the company is doing great, okay, because and you will be able to use your cash, which is there in your bank, and uh, you'll be able to pay off your current liabilities. But from the growth point of view, what does it mean? From growth point of view, if you look at, 
it essentially means that you probably don't have sufficient growth opportunities right because had you had more growth opportunities you would have rather used this cash in investing in you know growth projects which you are not doing it right now you're just sitting on cash it does mean that you are not having the right kind of projects to invest and that's why you have cash at your hand there could be other reasons as well you know the other reasons could be that you are piling up cash for a potential acquisition or something that's a separate uh, story altogether but in general let's say if cash ratio is greater than one liquidity is yes it's it's great but from growth point of view it is not good at all but uh, if it is less than one like in this case it was 0.2 it's fair this is what a healthy uh, cash ratio should actually look like uh, usually uh, the more acceptable one is uh, in the range of 0.2 to 0.3 times is what the cash ratio should be for a healthy company however again as i said greater than one liquidity point of view it's good but from growth point of view it is not good at all or you need to again go through the reasons why a company is piling up cash is it for a potential acquisition or for some kind of other investments which the balance sheet is not showing so more investigation will be required from that so not many analysts are kind of fan of this ratio but uh, these two ratios yes definitely they definitely look at these to over interpret the overall liquidity position of the company now with this uh, let's move on and uh, look at the cash ratio of colgate and how does it stand and how do we go about interpreting its ratio so here is the balance sheet of uh, colgate and for calculating the cash ratio we require only the cash and cash equivalents so if you look at this carefully for the uh, colgate cash and cash equivalents has been provided in a single entry so we don't have to add that up it's given as a single entry and that's 1315 for december 16 so we have the other five years data as well we'll calculate cash ratio for that too let's look at the current liabilities it's on row number 28 and uh, obviously we don't have to deduct anything here that's fine let's go to row number that's where uh, we will calculate the cash ratio so cash ratio is equal to cash and cash equivalents divided by our current liabilities okay this comes out to be 0 0.4 at the end of the day if you look at uh, maybe uh, the 0 0.4 is reasonable we would not say it's a it's a good one uh, because the typical range to look at is 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Some uh, analysts consider 0 0.4 also to be a reasonable number, a fair number to look at. But if it was greater than 1, yes, we should have been worried about uh, investment opportunities or growth opportunities of Colgate. So it sounds like it's a, it's a reasonable, it's at a reasonable level right now. Let's look at how it fares in for the other years too. So it increases to 0 0.45 but of late it has decreased to 0 0.22 0 0.22 and 0 0.20 so i'm just looking at cash ratio looks like it is in a fair position from liquidity point of view obviously cash ratio cannot be interpreted in isolation you have to look at all the other things too like the current ratio quick ratios as well and then uh, make an overall estimate of how it fits right if you have to interpret Colgate's uh, liquidity position, obviously current ratio is 0 0.99, quick ratio is 0 0.61, and cash ratio is 0 0.20. Uh, these two actually do are this one is a borderline case, but obviously 0 0.61 doesn't look good, and cash ratio is also fair. So I think if you look at just from the liquidity point of view, Colgate might not be doing very good. Okay, so that's that's the kind of interpretation we can have, and uh, obviously you cannot just take a single year. If you look at the previous three years too, you might find that the trend is deteriorating. So it the current ratio decreased from one point one four to one point zero three to zero point nine nine. So maybe are we looking at zero point nine? I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, 
Please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.